Debbie, I think we're live. I'm just waiting for my, I've got this new banks of light behind me that uh, tell me when all the, all the social media uh, feeds are, uh, are live or not. It's quite intriguing to see uh, which feeds come, come on live. Debbie, we're all live. Debbie, say hello to everyone. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? We are in the, what, what month are we, uh, with Debbie? Are we May or June? <laughs> June. This is the June broadcast for Women in Food and Farming, the, the fantastic and eclectic group um, of, well, why, am I, why am I looking to present uh, who Women in Food and Farming are? Debbie, t- tell us everything about Women in Food and Farming, please. Women in Food and Farming is a group of professional women at various stages of their careers who get together. At the moment, we get together once a month by Zoom and we have an interesting topic that we discuss. And we exchange ideas and it's a great form of support. Uh, there's an offer of mentorship, but basically it's just a, a collection, as Max has put it collect- correctly, of eclectic, interesting women. And I can't remember if you remember if you if, if you if you were there, but it feels like three years ago when you had one of your uh, live in person events. Oh, right. Debbie, do you remember those live in person events um, at Sa- Savills? Um, and I, I interviewed Christine uh, beforehand, and there must have been 100, 120 uh, ladies there in the gorgeous Savile um, head, headquarters. But because of everything that's been going on over the last couple of years, um, if you haven't dialed in before, either on a UK or an international basis, we've been, we, Beanstalk, have been running these broadcasts on behalf of the um, fantastic women and food and farming team to keep the continuity going. And we've had some amazing broadcasts. Debbie, across the board, we've learned so much. We've had some great interaction from some of the the, the breakout rooms. Uh, but but Debbie, should we just mention about the broadcast that we did as a as a as a, as a sort of a one off uh, last week? Yes, we normally have been meeting once a month on the first Tuesday of every month. But last Tuesday, we actually did um, a tribute to Caroline Drummond, who very sadly passed away, um, and uh, we actually. Max clipped her um, presentation that she did for us in March, which wasn't that long ago, talking about her work with LEAF, uh, which was incredibly uh, powerful work. And then we did some reflections, which has seemed to have gone down very well. So uh, in tribute to Caroline. It has. And and I know what she would say. She would say, Debbie, she would say, stop focusing on me. Focus on the future. And, and help Leaf and get involved with Open Farm, Farm, Farm Sunday. So um, if you haven't seen it, it is a very worthwhile broadcast for women in food and farming to see of, of Caroline, as Debbie says, of the of the last one of the last interviews that, that she did. And she was fantastic, wasn't she? She was so mercurial. Right. We were just yeah. saying in our green, green room how, how she'd already sort of um, mapped out as to where Leaf is going over the over the next 10 years and, and also why we all need to support. So if you just Google up. Caroline Drummond, Women in Food and Farming, or, or Beanstalk Global, you, you'll see the link there. If you can't find it, just uh, uh, contact me direct and I'll, I'll send you the, 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 the link um, direct. So today, so today, Debbie, I'm, I'm so so excited for, for a couple of uh, reasons. We had a great chat with our expert speaker, um, or oh, feels like 10 days, um, a, a couple of weeks ago. And you and I are completely biased to, to who our expert works for. Is there a particular reason, um, Debbie, that we're completely biased towards our expert today? Absolutely, because she's part of the Harper Adams community, which is an amazing place. And even more amazing, you're one of its illuminati. I know, I know. So somehow they let me in. Somehow they, they let me in. So, so, but what, why did you look to call upon Professor Dawn Arnold to, to come on today, please, Debbie? I've been very humbled to realise that there's an awful lot more going on at Harper Adams than perhaps you would first think about. So it's great to connect with Dawn and really understand the sort of research that she has done and the sort of impetus that she's bringing, uh, the professionalism, the standards, the interest, the thinking into Harper Adams um, to develop it, its sort of portfolio of, of, of interests. So I'm, I'm, I'm mightily impressed to meet and interact with Dawn and I thought it'd be great to share that. Yeah, well done. And if you remember our catch up that we had with Dawn prior to this, I, I asked Dawn that, uh, that horrible question. What does success look like uh, for you coming on the, the broadcast with Women in Food and Farming? And, and uh, I think she, I can't remember her exact words, but she alluded to she'd love to have more um, business, uh, business to business, business contacts 
with with Harper and, and we talked um Dawn, didn't we about the, the 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 Dutch diamond as we talked about before that in the likes of Holland they're so well bossed with education government and industry that they have this lovely virtuous uh, cycle and I think that's something that we you and I would love to create with with Harper and the other other universities but have to have more interaction with them with the universities because there's so much firepower Debbie isn't there within the likes of Harper that that can help the sector as a whole yeah, and it, it's it's basically that's that's another point of, of what we're doing today is showcasing what Dawn is doing and leading to, to generate more interest because exactly as you said, you get you get something going and it generates itself. So it's just just lovely to understand more about what what her thoughts are. And I'm smiling because someone's just WhatsApp me. Where's Dawn? <laughs> would you like to <laughs> would you like to introduce her formally, please? Don't turn you. Turn your camera on, Dawn. Here she comes. Just like, here she is. Fantastic. Oh, we love Dawn. Great. Go, go, go. Debbie, do the, do the proper introduction. Okay. So I'd like to introduce you, Professor Dawn Arnold from Harper Adams, and she's going to explain about herself, how she came to be where she is, and how she's now part of the Harper Adams community. Excellent. Debbie, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> you can turn off your video. Dawn, th thank you, thank you very much for for joining us, and and, and um, I hope it's okay just to mention some of the things that uh, you and I and uh, De Debbie talked about when we uh, connected a, a couple of weeks ago we've got to support the the, the universities haven't, haven't we because the, the likes of Harper because it is the future it is the future for the sector what, what do you think absolutely yeah yeah and and we can't do it without you you know we we need your problems to uh, give us uh, things to do and problems to solve and and help for going forward in the future yeah, and even even more so in, in our shall we, shall we describe those tricky times that uh, we've got to, a lot of the solutions are going to be coming from within the educational sphere and, and not just with the, all of the people that we know fighting on a, on a day to day basis with it with the issues of today. To, the, oh, I, I always never know if it's pleasant to, to say it, uh, Dawn, but uh, never waste a crisis. And if people, companies have got some um, issues, it's potentially that, that you and your colleagues at Harper have got the solutions to, to help those businesses to, to, to prosper for the, for, the, for the long term. Um, Dawn, just um, uh, for those people, especially listening on the podcast, if it's OK, I just want to give a, everyone a really proper understanding of, of yourself. So just to reiterate, we're live with Women in Food and Farming on the, on the Beanstalk Global uh, platforms. We're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter. And for, for the podcast, let's, uh, let's give um, uh, Dawn a, a really good uh, positive push, push up the hill for the world of a better expression. Uh, we're delighted to have with us today Professor Professor Dawn Arnold of Harper Adams University, and we're going to be discussing how Harper Adams connects and creates long-term benefits for our industry sectors. Dawn is Professor of Molecular Plant Pathology and Research Di Director of Harper. She's over 25 years experience working with bacterial pathogens and their interaction with their hosts, pea and beans. Her work has involved molecular genetic studies of the genes responsible for controlling host specific specificity, help me Dawn, uh, and her main area of focus is specifically investigating the role of horizontal gene transfer in the evolution of pathogenicity. Other, other areas of work include investigations into tree pathogens, in particular the bacteria that are associated with acute oak decline in the UK, hugely important. Her work is funded by BBSRC and charities such as Woodland Heritage. She was president of the British Society for Plant Pathology 2019, is a senior editor of Plant Pathology Journal and an academic editor for, oh, this is an interesting one. Um, Dawn, can you help me with this? PLOS. Uh, one, how's that pronounced, please? Plos. Plos, and, until yeah. 2020. She serves on the BBSRC Committee B from 2018. She regularly pub publishes in a range of international journals and is invited as a keynote speaker at a number of international and national conferences. Her teaching includes plant pathology, genetics, molecular biology, and molecular biological techniques. At Harper, she leads and supports the development of research in many areas of the university, strategic research with a focus around net zero in agriculture and food supply chains in concert with the wider requirements for sustainable agriculture, especially including the likes of rural economies, social justice, animal welfare, 
nutrients uh, cycling and pollution. She also leads the research pillar of the School of Sustainable Food and Farming at Harper, which is supported by us by their steering partners, Morrison's, McDonald's, um, UK and Ireland, and also the NFU, the National Farmers Union. Um, Dawn, I, I murdered some of the some of your background there, but as a as a whole, how did how well did I do? Did I miss anything? Very well. You did very well. You avoided the Latin names. That's always a good plan. <laughs> so come on, what, what attracted you to, to Harper? Um, initially, because when, when you look at your, your background, you could see that you could have actually gone off in, in, in a different route. Why why get a line to Harper, please? Well, um, when I did my PhD, which I did at Bath University, I actually worked on a, a disease of watercress. Um, and um, that was actually a, a case studentship. It was actually partly funded by industry. And I spent many a happy afternoon paddling around in watercress beds and talking to the farmers and trying to stop them helping with my experiments, which was which was interesting. And um, I, I, I always remember enjoying that connection directly with the industry. I used to go once a year to the watercress farmers annual dinner and tell them about my um, research, which is a sort of 20, 21 year old was a a fun event <laughs> to talk to them all they were they were really lovely um lunch always had a lot of watercress in it though um <laughs> and then I, I moved I moved to Bristol I was supposed to be at UWE Bristol University West of England Bristol for three years as a postdoc and I ended up staying 26 and wow. although I love my research um and the the very um detailed nature of it I, I always missed that real connection with industry that I'd enjoyed doing my PhD um, I'd okay. had some connections but not anywhere near as much as I had okay. so I, I knew of Harper um, and I um, the old um, vice deputy vice principal here invited me up to be on an interview panel for some from internal promotions and I at the same time, I saw the offer of this, this, this job posted. Um, at the same time as I was thinking, if I don't do something different soon, I'm never going to do something <laughs> different. And those things all came together. And um, I wanted to be more involved with the community, with industry. And um, I wanted to give something more back, to a wider focus than just my own very small research area. And the timing was just great until the pandemic happened and I spent the first year at home, but that's a different story. And, and, I, and I bet your background, I'm just uh, uh, assuming here, but I bet, your, I, bet, I bet your mum and dad were professors. I bet you've got brothers and sisters who, who, who lecture in, I don't know, robotics or um, um, uh, jet engineering or something. What, what's, your, what's your background? I was born in Smethwick, which is a, in a suburb of um, Birmingham council estate my dad worked in a foundry and my mom was a cleaner um, my sister still lives there my, my dad was um, very intelligent but never had the opportunities for education um, but he always loved gardening and we had an allotment and I developed a real love for plants and love from gardening from that so I was the first person wow. I went to polytechnic I didn't even make it into a university I failed to get into the university I wanted to get into so I went to Wolverhampton Polytechnic for my degree. Um, wow. So now my, I, I didn't really even know what a farm was when I was growing <laughs> up. Milk came in bottles off the man that drove down the street, as far as I was concerned. So absolutely not got a farm in or an education background. And look where you are now. And, and just just to do a bit of a deep dive on that, because as, um, as we said with the, when we had our catch up with, with Debbie, we, we want more more kids the, the younger generation to come into um agriculture come in, come into to fresh food and, and you're you're a shining example of this uh, if you can remember what was the what was the magic dust what was the catalyst for you to be interested in plants in that, in that allotment what 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 drew you to it? It, it i remember very well planting some potatoes and going out every day and trying to dig them up again to see if they were growing <laughs> i was just absolutely and the the, the old man in the allotment oh, telling me to leave them alone <laughs> Um, I was just fascinated by the fact that, you know, one potato went in, suddenly these leaves appeared and then there were more there. And I, it's just and, um, you know, I've got potatoes growing in my garden at home today. It's it's still a real passion to grow food. Um, yeah. And that just stuck with me. And like I said, when I got an opportunity to do a PhD, it was on watercress and, and I really enjoyed that. 
and there's some there's some great examples on an international basis about getting kids to grow things. There's the, there's a one I've mentioned uh, previously, uh, uh, Blue Skies, um, amazing business. Just quick story it's, it's actually Anthony Pyle's uh, MBE. It's his 75th birthday to, today, and um, some 24 years ago he went to Ghana and he started slicing up pineapples um, under a palm tree in, in Accra. And today they're the largest private employer in uh, in Ghana, uh, West Africa, and they employ four and a half thousand people. And there's 35,000 people that uh, um, hang off the the positively hang off the ecosystem of the, of that business. Business, and they make slice and dice fruit that you can uh, buy in the likes of M&S and discounters and, and, and waitress. The reason for mentioning them is that they saw with the with their farming community um, around the, the main main site in, in Ghana that the, the kids were going off to, to the cities. In um, in the world, the ten fastest growing cities are all in all in Africa, and there's this huge problem, just like we have here, just like we have in say America, of urbanization. And so they wanted to excite the kids about uh, about growing. So for all the major schools from a 50 kilometer radius of um, of their site, they sent out a pack of seed fertilizer and tools. And the older the the elders within the villages saw this and and showed the the kids and the teachers the skills as to how to how to grow. And what they found very very quickly was that the um, uh, the attention rate the attendance rate was so much better because the kids just like your example with, with your potato. The kids were coming in every day to see how well the, the crops were, were, were growing. They run this yearly competition and the top three schools win computers and, uh, and mobile phones. Um, and the teachers have also got into, into farming. And with a lot of these schools, they're now paying for all their stationery and books by all the produce that the kids, um, kid, kids grow. And so it's been so inspirational to try and get these kids converted um, that rather going into the, the to the city um, to, to and they want to they want to do good for themselves, but there's just no no roles. But there's actually lots of roles to be had in the countryside uh, growing. But there's still this perception in the likes of Africa that if you're a farmer, you're you're a peasant. But that that's so so wrong. And so just to dovetail that with the, with your example, if we could if we could find um, more uh, uh, children uh, who could be interested by growing. So, so what, what, what are we saying, Dawn, that if we could get kids to grow things, they would get excited and then look to explore further up the, the food chain or on a, on a scientific basis, just like you did. Do, do you think that might be the answer? Yeah, I, th I absolutely think so. I think in school, I mean, I, if you, if you see some really good examples on the telly of schools that have got their own, um, you know, vegetable plots and how excited the kids get about growing things there. And it is that, you know, going back day after day, something like growing a bean plant and seeing how it's developing. And I, I, I think, you know, you get kids young enough, they'll be really interested in that. It's certainly stuck with me yeah. all my life and I, I still love doing it. Yeah, but just with my, with my marketing head on, it's uh, I think it's called the Castrol GTX factor. That's uh, that this is a bit male bias, but if you can um, get a, a, a kid uh, using the oil, Castrol oil on the push bike, when they then morph up to a moped, they'll use the oil. When they then morph up to a car, a truck, or a tractor, they'll then use Castrol GTX. So to have that link all the way through, so at that younger age group, if we could get them growing um, at that 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 early age, but then I suppose that you've then got the issues of of schools are so they're so busy in the last couple of years, and also a lot of teachers come from an urban background, and so they may not know. But then there's some great schemes. We all know schemes. We were just talking about some. Um, um, open farm Sunday and how that that could be very, very beneficial just to plant that excuse the pun that that seed to get to, to get kids interested then then hopefully they'll, they'll come to Harper they'll come, yes. come to Harper door so, <laughs> well, so, when, so when, sorry go, when I was president of the British Society of Plant Pathologists one one of the things we were doing was developing school curriculum aids that um, teachers you know you expect teachers to know everything about plant diseases that they could actually go onto the website and take off material that could be used in schools at the correct curriculum level. And that was um, something that we were doing as a charity at the time. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can't do this as, as an individual, but collectively there's enough of us that can, that can, can look to aspire, especially with the, with the likes of social media. So uh, what's that message? Here, here we go. They're all coming in now. Dawn, can you ask Dawn, what does she actually do at Harper? Dawn, what do you actually do at Harper? <laughs> well, so, what I'm supposed to do is, <laughs> yeah, is uh, I, as research director, I've got an oversight of all the research that's done in Harper. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I um, 
try and bring in more funding to Harper. I um, help people write applications. I deal with any problems they've got. I look after the PhD population. I've got the overall say on those. Um, what else? I identify calls for funding. I work with the business development office to um, get in touch with industry. Um, if the, you know, if we can develop collaborations with industry. I train people in research, whether it's through workshops or seminars or conferences. So, so really it is to help people at Harper wow. do research and bring research and funding into the university to just try and raise our profile. I've, I've, I've just been a bit, bit glib, but it, it sounds like you've got control of it. You know, is it Area 51 in the Nevada <laughs> desert? That, uh, that There's a dawn out there who's just who's policing that. And it sounds like you, I'd, I'd love to know the research projects that you, go on, tell us about, tell us about some of the research projects. projects. Tell us about the Area 51 at Harper. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've only been here, j- j- it's less than two years. So a lot of this Don't, don't pull that card. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this was ongoing before okay. I came, but I'm sure some people may have heard of hands-free farm, hands-free a hectare. So this is yeah. the sort of automating the, the growing of crops, which, um, you know, a lot of people are excited by, some people may be nervous by, but the engineering department and their precision farming, they've been developing robots that can pick fruit um, and all this sort of thing. So that's really good. There's a lot of, for the animal science side, there's a lot of work on feed additives and, a lot of it is all to do with reducing emissions and working towards net zero. Um, we've got a very big entomology department that are looking at crop pests and how these can be, um, you know, how we can alleviate those. Um, lots and lots and lots of things. Excellent. So, um, someone's just uh, WhatsApp me, who I, who I won't name, but they've just they've just said that the, the future's coming. If you're not part of the future, you won't be in the future. Harper is brilliant at predicting the future. So, 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 so just so just on on that side, on, on the on the basis that you um, are, are creating the of the Bing Club again, the the, um, the the future. How how can we um, all engage? Whether that be individuals, whether that be students, whether that be businesses. Um, it, it's it, are you looking for this to be open source as as a, as, a, as a whole, or are you looking for partnerships? What what's the ideal mechanism that that you're looking for with the for people to have this relationship with the, with Harper Adams University? But there's, there's many different ways. I mean, one of the big ways that's been launched in the last year is that, and you mentioned it in your introduction, is the School of Sustainable Food and Farming, which is the collaboration we set up with Morrison's, NFU and McDonald's. But there's a lot of other businesses joining that as, as partners. They, ne- they may not be the steering level that the, the others are, but they're coming with us. They're coming through the business development office to the school and they're saying, you know, We've got this problem. We'd like to do some research in this area. How can you help? What can you do? Um, the school has a number of tiers, one of which is research, but we also have um, an upskilling tier where we're, we're developing um, material to help educate farmers and, um, and also new, new skills, new students as well. And there's also a policy tier to try and influence policy. But I lead the research tier and we're doing a lot of that in collaboration with industries. So people come to us. And then there's also lots of levels, you know, we, we actually have people who just may want a honours research student in their final year to help them with the project. And that, that's fantastic. All the way up to somebody who wants to fund a PhD student to work yeah. with them. Um, um, we also, you know, students have placements with industry. All our students do an industrial placement. I don't know if they did in, in your day. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> When I wasn't watching my black and white TV, yes, I did an industrial placement. Of yeah, that. But, I mean, but, I, but actually, just a major on that. Well, again, where the likes of Harper and the, um, I, I managed to do mine in Australia on, on cotton, and it was the absolute making of me um, in the respect of, of confidence and, and learning machinery and, and interacting with, uh, with with people. So that placement year um, is it, is so important. It's just it's just um unbelievable point that to the point that other agricultural institutions back then there would be um individuals coming out going in as farm managers and they'd never driven a tractor and so uh, at, at harper not only did we know how to um to, to manage manage people plant crops break down tractors and and and, and fix them uh, we we could we we just we just had that stamina as well because harper taught, taught us so well sorry don don't yeah well, what i was going to say is um a lot of institutions like my old institution the placement year is um 
you can do it or not it, you know wow. but harper you have to i mean and there's a real big support mechanism about getting people into placements but we're always looking for placement partners somebody who wants to take a student for you and and as you said i think it's the making of the students they can you can see the difference when they come back into the yeah. final year that they they really know what it's like to be involved with industry then and yeah. it, it's I, great Dawn, can I just em emphasise this, that those who are considering or, or aren't aware of what placement students or um, those, those doing, um, help, help me with the words again, Dawn, remember my, my lack of intelligence, um, th those who are, are looking to do, do a doctorate. Um, with, I've, I've met a number of clients, especially now with, with the shortage of, of candidates, there's this expression of grow your own, um, that they, they look to take placement students on and if that placement student is good, and nine times out of 10, they're, they're gonna be uh, very, very good from, from Harper. Um, they, they, they bring them into the business. Let them, yeah, do, the placement, do, let them yeah. do the placement year uh, with you. They'll have a thesis to, to write. Get them to write the thesis on, on something within, within your business that you've been struggling with or you've never been able to, to get, get to. Pay them, mm -hmm. it's, 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 yeah. it's not as pennies, but yeah. imagine if you've got a, a student pulling on Dawn and all of her colleagues uh, to, to use that all that firepower within Harper to report back to you, your board, or, or use a, an individual, however your business is structured, because they might just come up with a solution to something that's been yeah, bothering absolutely. you for a number of years. And likewise, then bring them back into the into the business. I, I know two fantastic examples in, in industry. I, I, won't, I won't name them because I'm embarrassing Dawn, but they, they were taken on as placement students when I was there watching black and white TVs. Um, and they came back into their businesses, worked their way up. Um, one's now the CEO of his business and the other one is the chairman of, of his business. And they stayed all the way through. And just to, can you imagine everyone having that continuity in your business, having someone uh, work their, all the way through 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 the business? Talk, talk about some career career planning. So, yes, I can't emphasize that enough. I, another reason to engage with Dawn and her, her colleagues to grow your own Grow, grow, grow for your future. Sorry, Dawn, back to you. Uh, well, I was just going to say, and it's a really nice way to make a connection with Harper because you you get an academic who's the academic supervisor of that student and they'll come out and do a visit. They'll be in touch with the student. They'll be in touch with you. And you get this really nice connection with Harper and with the, the industry that the student's in the placement with. Yeah, and be, everyone, be curious when you engage with with, uh, with Harper. There's such a, a resource there. And we, as we were, uh, Debbie and I were saying about this this thing that I'd love us to, to copycat, to plagiarise and, and do better by, the, the Dutch diamond. So just to talk about that again, where they've got education, uh, they've got business and they've got government all working on, on a, a virtuous uh, um, a virtuous basis. Um, Dawn, we better not get political, but perhaps with our diamond, we might just miss miss out the government at the moment while, whilst they sort out some 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 minor admin things and, and just come direct to you. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. We'll give them a little time to sort themselves out. Okay. So, so how so how do how would you like um, businesses or business people or entrepreneurs to 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 connect with you? Because like likewise, you're very busy. And, and you don't want to be, you don't want to have people coming to you, I'm guessing, and saying, I've got an idea, but I'm not sure. You, you really want people who are, um, uh, have, have got a sound business idea or a sound business. I, I suppose we've got to be slightly mercenary. We can't waste your time. What, what's the ideal sort of partnership collaborations that you're looking for, please? Well, I, I get all sorts and I'm, I'm happy to, to take anything really, you know. Um, people email me and say we've got this problem and I, I basically I'm like a filter I'll then pass it on to whoever I think can um, can can help you know whether I can get back to people myself or I, I might pass it we've got a big business development office that deal with a lot of this Claire is, is literally in the office next door to me she can usually point me in the right direction so you know I don't mind if people come to me with a small idea of thoughts or a big idea um, if we can help we'll find a way of doing it. We we just like to make these connections. Okay, and what about the physicality of it? How do we how do we actually get in contact with, with yourselves? Is it is it okay? Email. Email. Just, okay. Yeah. Email's and, and, the simplest. And and, and actually, I'm, I'm I'm guessing that Harper's going to be at cereals uh, for the for the next. Uh, uh, I don't know. But you, I, you normally yeah. are. You, you normally are. So I'm sure Debbie will be able to tell it to us later. But, Going but if, back out into the world now. Yeah. <laughs> So people, okay, yeah, stand back. So, so you can connect uh, with uh, with Harper, the likes of uh, um, Ceros, and, and from memory, um, you're attending a lot of the other events. So to be able to 
just remember this broadcast with uh, with, with Dawn and, and go and have a have a have, have a chat on Stan with with Harper. I, I think would be very, very useful. So, so let, let's use this this phrase again that we we used um, previously. Dawn, success. What would you like? Um, that if if we if you and I could wave the proverbial magic wand, how would you like industry to collaborate with you more? So, what would success look like for yourself and your colleagues at Harper? Oh, new avenues, new new ideas, new research directions, new things we can help with, um, new places for our placement students to go. Um, these connections are, are really important. That that's what success would look like to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. And, and don't sorry, I'm cutting across you again because it's important, and it's something that um, I think I've discussed with yourself and, and your colleagues. Um, there, there's uh, a, a, a request, a demand to see if we can find more international student placements for those those at Harper. The UK is brilliant, but also we're, we're in, a, in a big wide world and there's some amazing agricultural initiatives that even we know in the likes of South Africa, um, the, the likes of um, South America and, 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 and America. So, so if you are um, listening to this on an international basis and you'd like to connect with, uh, with Dawn and her colleagues to see whether you can get some placement students coming out, out to yourselves. We, we all collectively would love to hear from you. As, as I said, uh, for my placement year, I went out to Australia and I think there were five students that followed me for the next five successive years and it was all, all the making of us and we brought a lot back to Harper and Harper um, also got some great connections in Aus Australia on the, on the back of that. And then, and then Dor, just coming to industry, um, on, on your shopping list, is there any particular gaps in research that you would love to have a, have a partner with? Now you're asking. Um, nothing comes to mind where, you know, no, I can't think of anything particularly. I think we're just interested in the, all the agri-food businesses, you know. Okay. So... Um, and, and, and Dawn, just looking at the, um, the the bit of a gold rush of interest at the moment in the likes of vertical farming. Um, yeah. so, so, so again, we're seeing a lot of intelligent people coming into the sector, but haven't got an understanding of actually how to grow. Love your example of watercress and also don't have an understanding of the commerciality of, of dealing with, uh, with, with, uh, with, with retailers. So, so again, you're open. Yes, you're, you're not, absolutely you're not, open. You, yeah. You're not looking to be myopic. So, um, whether it be robotics, whether it be vertical farming, whether it be uh, regenerative agriculture, whether it be on the sustainability element, you're, you're figuratively up for anything within, within reason. You'd love to have that uh, yeah. that conversation. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've got people working on vertical farming here already, you know, and they're, they're, we've got what we what Fresh Projects Research Group who do all sorts of work on that area and they're always up for making new connections. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, um, just had a WhatsApp in. This is from someone who was at Harper <laughs> 20, 20 year, years ago. Too many stories there. Um, but they would like <laughs> to know the physicality of Harper. They've heard, uh, Max, I've heard that Harper has grown beyond recognition from when we were all there. Could Dawn just give an understanding as to the facilities now on site, whether that be students or, or on a research basis? Dawn, Dawn, talk us through Harper. Is it? I think it's probably changed a lot. We've got quite big labs now. Um, one of those buildings is only a few years old, so we've got laboratories to do research in. The farms expanded over the years, so we've got the dairy unit, pig unit, poultry unit. Um, we have um, the, the the engineering buildings. A lot. I mean, it's a fairly new building. I don't know if the soil shed was there in those days, but the soil shed's there and um, it's been expanded out the back. So it's full of all sorts of farming equipment. There's a lot of field trials that we do here now. There's a lot of staff offices. There's a lot of halls of residence on site. We've got the Agri Epi Centre here, which is fairly new. And only last year we, uh, we opened the Veterinary um, Education Centre, right. which is our new um, degree um, collaboration with Keele University, the Vet Science Degrees. And, and we've still got the veterinary nurses here, the companion animal house. We've got a whole entomology building. Greenhouses, I forgot the greenhouses, where we grow the plants, yes, wow. as well. Wow. So and, and, I, I get the so, impression, even, the, even some of the maps around the site are now out of date because of the buildings that have been put up recently. Wow, and, 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 and again, that's, that's been where Harper's been so brilliant at the strategic direction that um, we, we miss them, but the likes of the Shuttleworths and the, and the Seal Haynes of, um, of, of, of the day. Harper's just always been on, on the money. Where they've been 
immensely good dawn is gain, gaining people like yourself who are, are sort of as a sector but in sector to come into 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 harper to further pro progress it and um you, you've got a relatively new vice chancellor in as well haven't you yes so um uh professor ken stone sloan started uh ooh, november so yeah there was quite a turnaround of stuff over the pandemic period um, and we've got an, a new deputy vice chancellor michael lee who's an animal scientist and he's led the school of sustainable food and farming ken's uh come back from australia he was at warwick university so he's doing a whole strategic review at the moment seeing what directions we could get going to go in um yeah so there's a real energy about yeah. about the developing the university definitely yeah two, two new whatsapps in dawn is mustard ken is mustard i don't know what that means but i think i think that's positive <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so just to, 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 to just uh, conscious of, of the time, um, Debbie, can you come back in? Because it'd just be interesting to get um, get get your your thoughts on this. Um, I've just been asked by one of my cohort to, to mention about the TVs. Just uh, Dawn, just just quickly, when so when you go to Harper, I'm sure it's still the same. You do your first, uh, I think it's first first term um, or first couple of terms in Harper in, um, in in residence, and then you go out to some farm cottages. And we were on a on a farm farm estate. And uh, the three cottages that we were all in, we rented one TV, but we didn't have a TV license. And the TV license bloke, you know, the detective van used to come come round, uh, but we could see him coming up the drive. So we used to hide the TV in each other's cottages. And so you go to one cottage trying to find someone to put the fine on. Uh, uh, we'd move the TV to cottage number two, to the cottage is number three so it's like something out something out of lauren hardy but please don't tell harper that because that, that's a that doesn't happen anymore Deb, Debbie. yeah no, you just shouldn't say things like that max because it really isn't pc we have much better behaved than we used to be but this is in the day of black and white tvs it's, it's absolutely so De debbie tell us what you think on the on the back of um dawn giving us an update of harper and also um debbie could you just tell us your position with uh with the fantastic institution that is harper adams university please so I'm very privileged to be a governor of Harper Adams and I'm about halfway through my term and I have learned a lot, an awful lot about what goes on at Harper Adams um, and each time I learn something I'm amazed that there's, there's more to learn. There's an awful lot more going on there than I ever thought and I think it, I think to echo you, you Max, there is, uh, it's an amazing place for strategic direction and strategic thinking but I'm incredibly impressed to meet people like Dawn yeah. who really have the firepower to think differently and to be ahead of the curve in terms of where the research should be, research thinking. But it's not just off the wall research thinking, it's research thinking in terms of practical solutions to real problems. Yeah. And that's what's particularly impressive about Harper. The whole direction, the whole collaboration thing is about where are we going and how can we get there better, faster, more efficient, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you know, and, and, and Debbie, Debbie we, we've said there's so many times on the Women in Food and Farming broadcast. There's one thing that we've learned over the last couple of years is how key co collaboration is. There, but there, there does, does seem to be a bit of a roadblock um, in, in the respect of companies not being aware or, or not wanting to be aware of, of this collaboration they can have with Harper. Uh, Debbie, what do you think is the is, is the is the oil uh, that we that we can put down to, to to stop that block and get them to be engaged with the with the likes of Dawn and her colleagues? I think you're doing a great job, Max. And I think the more we can uh, highlight case studies of, of what's going on and what's good, for instance, the hands free hectare turning into hands free farm, uh, the school of sustainable farming, all this stuff that we can showcase really gets people interested and excited. Um, and it, it reminds people within the trade who are working that it isn't just a, you know, an agriculture institution. It's a real powerhouse of thought and development. So the more we can showcase, the better. Yeah. And, it, and it's just getting over that point that uh, Harper Adams University is not just a, uh, an educational means to train the students of the future. It's also to train the industry. It's, it's to, to, to deploy that R&D yeah. um, yeah. ongoing. I'm, I'm just going to call in uh, Christine and, and, and Kirsty because it'd be great to get their update. And uh, Elizabeth Stockdale, thank you very much. Um, Dawn, you're on stand 908 at Cereals at Duxford, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. 908. You're going to I should get shot for yeah, not knowing that. You're going to go back, back in the class. Remember that? 908. I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, hopefully, Debbie, you wouldn't know. You're the, the, I've forgotten her name, but the fantastic student union president. Um, yeah. 
Emily, Emily's the, the the one we have at the moment. Thomas Oti last year. There's some. They are super people, and yeah. they uh, they're really great at engaging uh, students with um, sort of. Uh, new ideas but also inclusivity they've, yeah. they've really got a thing about making sure that all aspects of student life are represented and encouraged so it's not just about going to the pub yeah and having tv licenses as well um but i, I interviewed thomas last year and he was he was he was He's mustard great. um so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure i look out to, to interview and Emily emily's as well. amazing as well so you know we've been incredibly fortunate this last couple of years really good yeah. student union presence right here's an interesting one uh kirsty what's your view of harper adams university but uh, don't you know, you've got to turn your ears on you've got it or your mic on you're not escaping escaping at that easily right you're in da, 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 da. <laughs> Kirsty always does this when she doesn't want to answer the difficult questions. So, I, Kirsty, whilst you're doing that, I'm going to. Oh, Kirsty, just try it. There we go. Yeah. Can you hear me now? You're, you're not evading that question. What is your yeah. view as one of as one of the excellent team at MDS? What's your view of Harper Adams University, please? Well, I was saying I, I get to see um, two interesting parts of Harper because I am technically part of their alumni, having done my postgraduate there um, as part of MDS back in the day. Um, though I think I was only on campus twice. Um, and then uh, we obviously get a lot of um, Harper Adams students um, naturally attracted to the MDS programme. Um, and I always think that the fact that they will have to do that year placement really benefits them when they're sort of making their first forays into um, their, so that their early careers. It really sort of gives them that little bit of extra um, something about them. Yep, agreed. And you, you can you can definitely spot Harper individuals and, and a crowd as, as I will do over the next couple of days at Serials. Christine, how can we get this 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 mercurial solution that we want of more companies uh, looking to positively lean on the on the likes of Harper um, to gain more placement students and also this R R and D element? You, you look at your mercurial background within the likes of the Co-op Farms and Grocery Co Adjudicator and Anglia Farmers. You, you must have some thoughts as to how we can. Um, push aside that roadblock to create this 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 free flow of traffic between business and um, and the likes of Harper. Well, my my experience is that businesses that do take on placement students keep on doing it. You know, they they take on one and then they realise this is how to fit them into the business. And you know, I suppose we have that problem a bit when we start you know getting members into MDS that they're sort of thinking, well, you know, I haven't got a job for them. And you think, what about a project? What about something that you that needs improving in your business? Why don't you put somebody onto that? And it doesn't take long before you've got them that you suddenly get overwhelmed. You know, once they become a member, then they've constantly got projects for you. And it's exactly the same with the year placements. And a lot of people just factor it in, you know, that get, getting students from, you know, placement students in as, as just a core part of how they how they recruit people and also how they manage um, labour shortages and labour surpluses. And when they've got a shortage, then they will recruit some in. And then a year when they maybe haven't got a vacancy, they need to take one in. It's, it gives them huge flexibility. But I think what, what I wanted to ask Dawn about is, is you know, MDS really passionately believes in is trying to attract people into our industry like her, who have very, very little knowledge of it, but just like the idea of being in it. And how how does Harper find them and how how welcome are they when they get into the Harper environment by the other students? Um, well, I hope very welcome. We like, you know, with especially, you know, we've got a strong respect policy here for all students and, and, and the welcome. But I mean, I mean, Harper's just... Even just this Easter, it was actually on Countryfold, had a programme where they, they took a, a group of students from, I think it was somewhere in a city in London, and um, brought them up here and gave them the Harper experience for a, a, a long wow. weekend. To, and, uh, you know, they, they were showing them wrestling sheep and uh, flying drones and digging up crops and all sorts of things. And I think the more of that that we can do is, you know, bring them on and just let them see what a farm does and, and a very hopefully modern up to date farm that there are things for different people to be able to do. I think the more of that we can do, the better. Um, just take them out of the comfort zone and bring them here. 
Dawn, my, my mother's just WhatsApp me because she's watching this. And uh, she she said, thank God for Harper. If it wasn't for Harper, you wouldn't be where you are today. I've got to, I've got to figure out where I am, though. But that's that's very, very, very kind of was mother to dial in on a, on a gorilla basis um, uh, such as that. And I don't come from a farming background. And but back, back in the day, I, I was nervous about going to Harper, but I, I was welcomed with, uh, with open arms. Again, it's that whole thing, as we all know, about the farming community, that everyone is so is so so welcoming um so so it wasn't a problem uh four years ago when i was there um i'm sure don, sure sure, sure, sure it, it isn't, it isn't don, so. don hasn't talked about you know how students um vote for, for harper adams because it does very well in student surveys doesn't it and don't you do extraordinarily well in employability we do we are top in employability or at least yes. very close to the top it or because and uh, it's, it's actually called yeah. it actually causes us problems would you believe because one thing we want is students to go on and do higher degrees with us but they don't they all go off and get jobs so right we stay at harper get in a bit more debt and do a nice higher degree and they're like no i've got a job and off they go so which is fantastic and i'm not complaining but i've never worked at a university that didn't have a stream of people that wanted to stay on because they've got so many opportunities to go and be employed which is it is brilliant uh, Dawn, a little Dawn, annoying at times. <laughs> uh, Dawn, we, we've, we're, we're going, uh, we're going, I forget my numbers, 8,000 miles south, South Africa, South Africa. One, one, one of my contacts is just WhatsApp to say, would Harper be interested in connections with fresh produce companies and agricultural yes. companies in South Africa? So, yeah. so can we just quickly investigate that? So you're not parochial of 22 no. miles around Newport, Shropshire. No. You're, you're looking on an international basis. No, we do have connections with some places in Africa already. And on a personal note, I've had connections with them. Um, people in South Africa in my previous job. So I'm very interested in that. Okay. So, so everyone, we're just slight, slightly run, running out of um, out of time. Um, Debbie, just th there must be a reason why you wanted to become a governor of, of Harper. Where where would you like Harper to, to be five years, ten, 10 years down the line, please? Well, I'm very excited by the, by the future and get more excited each time I go because there is just so much going on in in so many different directions so it's just more of and um, faster more interesting more in depth more connectivity and um, it's just just great to see that energy enthusiasm positive thought and, and let's have more of it and success for me would be more students more uh, more output more connection excellent and uh, christine um, Kirsty, just a quick question for for you both. You, you're both worldly wise within within the world of agriculture and uh, and fresh produce in the UK and internationally. Do you think it's a benefit for individuals to go to Harper and companies to be aligned to Harper? Uh, Kirsty, you go first. Um, I think anything that um, I mean, Harper is great at sort of sparking that interest and in anything that you can um, do that is going to encourage people to maybe think outside their traditional um, employment and education routes is definitely going to be a, a benefit. And Harper does fantastically um, at that. Excellent. Christine? Uh, well, well um, I have to speak as chair of MDS where we recruit a lot of people from Harper. So it, it, it turns out the sort of people that we want that the industry then wants um, when they leave, when they've finished MDS. But I do have to say that this is not an advert for Harper Adams, that there are <laughs> universities, yeah. there are technical colleges you can go to, and if somebody's doing a completely different degree, um, then MDS is a route into the industry afterwards where we've, we've got people on our course who've done bioarchaeology and languages and history. So I just want, you know, Harper is just one route into our industry, but there are many routes in and, uh, and they're all just as exciting and forward looking. And, and Dawn, I'm sure you endorse this, won't you? That if we're all shouting from the rooftops about the career possibilities potential in agriculture, uh, in, in, in fresh produce and vertical farming, um, whether that be from Harper or apprenticeships, or just, just a, the matter of getting people in, getting people into, into the sector. Would you, Dawn, would you agree? Yeah, totally agree. And it, it's becoming more and more important under the current political um, situations, climate change, all these things, agriculture. And I, don't, I don't need to tell you, but people with the skills to do this job are becoming more and more needed and more and more important, I feel. Yeah. And, and also it's hugely technically advanced. Um, you know, we get sick of people doing adverts that imply that farmers still, still, you know, still work on the family farm, you know, ridiculously long hours. It is a very technically advanced industry. And, uh, and it, you know, we, we, we would love gamers, all sorts of people like that to be. Yeah. 
come and work with us. Yeah, fantastic. So um, everyone, just before we, we wrap up and say thank you very much to Professor Dawn Arnold of Harper Adams University, I think we've got some parish notices. Um, uh, Kirsty, do you want to, you're, you're at a big event tomorrow. Do you want to just yeah, uh, so, watch a little call about that, please? So um, we're going to the Festival of Fresh run by the FPJ um, tomorrow. So if anybody would like to come and talk to us or talk to me um, in particular, more about MDS um, and our new development schemes, particularly around our um, non-graduate flexi apprenticeships, which we will be talking about in sort of more detail, trying to encourage a wider range of individuals um, into the industry and how they can help your businesses, please do. And then from a um, women in food and farming perspective, we have our first live event of the year. Um, that's going to be on the 26th of September, uh, 5.30 to 9 o'clock at the Margaret Street Cafe uh, near Savills. Um, a notice will be going out in the um, newsletter this month where you can book your places um, on there. Christine, is there anything else I needed to mention about that just before? No, it, yeah, just, 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 don't, just put it in your diary, September the 26th, Savills at uh, probably about six o'clock in London. And also to say that, uh, you know, our broadcasts are on the first Tuesday of every month. And our, our July speaker is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stockdale from Naya, who's okay, lessons in better soil management to improve carbon footprints that is just hugely topical at the moment. So very, very pleased to have her coming and joining the call um, and, and being our speaker uh, next month. Excellent. And I'm at uh, Cyril's for two days, chair chairing some stuff and doing lots of uh, live interviews. And I'm going to go to the Harper Adams uh, stand. Dawn, I've forgotten the number. What's the number again for Harper Adams? I forgot as well. I think it was 908, wasn't it? 908. 908. Oh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll come Debbie. and find you on Thursday, Max. Excellent. <laughs> look, look, uh, look, look forward to it. Debbie, could you thank um, Dawn for, for firstly putting us up with all of us, especially, especially me? But I, I think it's just the more that we can shout collectively about Harper Adams University in the sector as a, as a whole and to, to have people like, like uh, Dawn um, just be so ins inspiring and for, for all these companies that we're talking about to, to engage with. Dawn, uh, uh, Debbie, over to you. Can, can you, can you positively you very sign much, off? Dawn. We've, we've, uh, we've known each other for about three or four years now and uh, it's great to grow the relationship. Uh, I'm, I'm hugely impressed with her work, but I, I'm really grateful for you uh, putting up with Max and I and uh, the rest of us to just have a chat about where, where you've come from, where, you, where you're trying to get to and all the, all the engagement that's going on, which has floored me. So, you know, to your credit, thank you, for, thank you for being part of our team this evening. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I'm just speaking for a, a whole lot of people who do all the hard work around here. So I'm just uh, taking credit for them, really. But they do the work. Excellent. Well done, everyone. Thank you very much. That's another great broadcast with a fantastic uh, uh, speaker for Women in Food and Farming for our June outing. And we'll hopefully see you in our July outing or we'll see you at the various uh, events, whether it be at Kirsty at, uh, at the Festival Fresh or uh, some of us at uh, Cereals or Groundswell coming up at the end of the month or Fruit Focus in, in July. We look forward to, to hopefully seeing you all face to face. Thank you, everyone.